Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, excited about uh, celebrating a win with the guys yesterday. Uh, told the guys after the game it was a team effort and uh, started with the scout team last week. I thought our scout team was really good. We went a lot more uh, ones versus ones or ones versus twos or good on good O-line, D-line last week. And I think that really helped us uh, having our two offensive line go against our one defensive line and vice versa for a good chunk of practice on Tuesday and Wednesday. I think it it it, it allowed our guys to play a little bit faster uh, and see pictures uh, quite a bit. But uh, overall, I thought our scout teams did really well. And then uh, uh, kids watched a countless amount of film and uh, prepared really well. Not that we haven't prepared well in the past. I just think there was such a, a sense of urgency uh, this week. Uh, or this past week and um, it didn't start off well. The, the game didn't, but uh, pleased with the way the guys didn't panic, um, especially at halftime when we went in and made some adjustments. The guys were uh, saying all the right things that uh, felt like we just needed to make a play and talk about you know getting a break, making a break, making a play. Ty Zentner and Felix Anaduke were that, that was the play. That was where the two plays that that sparked us. We get the big punt that we down inside the four, and then Felix makes uh, an absolutely phenomenal play, uh, getting held and, and getting the safety, and that kind of gave us a lift on the sideline and able to make a, a couple of plays after that to, to have success and find a way to win. So big win for the program, but now we have to turn the page and get ready for a really good TCU team. Uh, that's going to be uh, a great ball game here uh, this Saturday, like it's been the last few years. Coach, TCU struggled last weekend with West Virginia. Does that mean anything? I mean, it doesn't really translate week to week, does it? Really? It really doesn't. I, I think there's so many different matchups in this league that are uh, kind of different matchups. I look at Texas Tech uh, has, has won against West Virginia the last – three years somehow we found a way to win against texas tech the last three years and there's just different matchups like that that uh um yeah there's such parity in this league uh i think we even found that out last week in, in lawrence i thought ku uh, played a phenomenal game against ou and you have to be ready to play every week and uh so I, we look at tcu as a whole of we've played them really tight ball games the last two years found a way to come away with victories but they could have gone either way and they're just such a well-coached, physical, athletic team that uh, we got to have great plans. What do you see from this TCU offense? Explosive plays. Doesn't matter who they're playing against. You know, you look at the games against uh, Texas and OU and Texas Tech. The amount of explosive plays, the 30, the 40, the 60-yard plays that they get against people, uh, rushing the football with two phenomenal running backs and. Uh, throwing the ball and getting explosive plays um, with the wide receiver. And I, I'm a big Max Duggan fan. I think Max is, is a great competitor, a really good quarterback, excellent runner, can beat you running it and throwing it. Um, um, been a fan of his since the, the time he played here as a true freshman and made some plays against us. And I think he's a great competitor. West Virginia had success with offensively against the TCU defense. Does that translate to you guys at all? Well, we have to be able to rush the football, even though we didn't have great success last week. Uh, we have to find ways to rush the football to complement us, uh, throwing the ball to complement us uh, on defense. Um, and, uh, you know, they they got off to uh, a poor start, losing a, missing a kick return, but then they just methodically made some plays. And they got them to turn the ball over, so they were able to get some short fields. Uh, but uh, West Virginia had a really good game plan. The play Felix made down at the end zone, is that just one of the more physically uh, quality plays you've ever seen? It really, it, without question, Kellis, it's one of the best plays I've seen. Um, and he did a great job. We called a, a movement where he kind of slid inside at the last second and shot a gap. But the, the guy kind of saw him and he, he kind of grabbed him and held on to him. But Felix just kept powering through. Uh, and then to be able to not only hit the kid, but not have the guy go forward and, and knock him to the side and knock him backward a little bit, I thought was a phenomenal play. And I know we talked about it in our team meeting yesterday, the appreciation our guys had for that play, the appreciation the guys had for uh, Ty had an 81 yard kickoff. It kicked the ball 81 yards in the air uh, is pretty remarkable. I, I just, um, we, we made some plays on Saturday. I thought that was the key. What was the earliest you remember 
seeing Felix play like that in practice and you thought, boy, this kid is going to be good. Yeah, last year, uh, learning from Wyatt, I believe, just seeing the motor uh, and the ability to, to utilize his explosiveness. He's, he's going to continue to get stronger, continue to get uh, quicker, but he's an explosive guy and he plays so hard. Uh, and that's a credit to him and a credit to coach Wyatt who, who pushes him. Um, but I've just seen glimpses of the guy and obviously last year and obviously this year, it's been really consistent. I know you and Coach Wells are friends. Was it disappointing to hear the news? Yeah, it was. I don't know all the circumstances, but uh, Matt's a class act and and a good friend of mine in the profession. And uh, sorry to hear it. And um, it's you know it's a bad deal for for him. It's a bad deal for for the profession. But I, I don't know all the circumstances. Chris, what kind of raises your antenna about your front seven going up against TCU's offensive line? Big challenge for us because they have a really good offensive line. They're big, they're physical, uh, they're older guys. We have to be able to hold up uh, in the run. They're going to be able to run the football some. They're going to get some some yards with the backs that they have and the scheme that they have. We have to try to eliminate the explosive play, and it's something that we've been talking about uh, for weeks now, and we've not done a great job of that. Uh, but uh, it's going back and continuing to work on the fundamentals of, of block destruction, work on the fundamentals of angles and tackles and know where you can miss. Uh, because as we saw on film the week before, when uh, we were prepping for Texas Tech, I think TCU had six to eight runs that were 40 plus yards. And so, um, and oftentimes there was a guy there and we couldn't, they couldn't make the play. We have to be able to make the play uh, against really good running backs. What areas of improvement did you see from your linebacking unit? Uh, just the fact that uh, we were running through leverage. I thought from middle of the middle of the second quarter on, I thought collectively as a defense we played um, a lot more sound. We were we were gap. We had good gap integrity. We were able to keep the keep leverage on the defense. Uh, they had the one long pass play right before half. Uh, that was disappointing, but from a run game standpoint, we started to play better late in that second quarter, and then it carried over into the second half. And that's the thing that I know is frustrating for our guys, frustrating for us as coaches, frustrating for uh, fans and stuff, is we've got to be able to put that together for four quarters uh, on defense. We've played in spurts really well, uh, shut them out in the second half, which is uh, a dynamite performance. But we have to be able to sustain it. We have to be able to be consistent. Do you feel like that second half defense, is that the best your defense has played for at least an extended period of time in about a month? Yeah, probably. You know, we we had a couple of, of good performances uh, early on, whether it be a half or so. But that's that's goes back to the same thing. We, we have to sustain that for four quarters. We have to start faster on defense. We haven't started very fast the last few weeks on defense. Um, and it's not like the calls are any different. I mean, we're making the same calls in the first half that we were in the second half. It's, you know, maybe – you you can't say well we're getting adjusted to the speed of the game you don't they don't allow you to do that they don't allow you a, it's not an exhibition season for a quarter we have to get adjusted to the speed a lot faster um, and I, I'm hopeful going against our, our offense a little bit more and going some ones versus ones or ones versus twos and getting uh, some uh, older more experienced linemen and backs to go against uh, will help us to start a little bit faster, but uh, we played well in the second half and hopefully that gives them some confidence. Yeah, I was going to ask, have you, I know it's early, but have you seen any signs this week that can make you believe this could be the turning point for that side of the ball? We'll, we'll find out. Uh, we had a good day yesterday, but today's our first day in pads and um, we, we have to have a physical practice. Guys are beat up. So we got to be careful. We got to have a physical practice. Uh, but most importantly, we have to do a great job of, of continuing to work the little things that are that are getting us, which is block destruction, of knowing how to get off a block and where I have to keep my leverage on a block and and running through leverage on contact. And that, that's going to be the biggest challenge this week against running backs that are not going to get arm tackled. They're going to run through arm tackles. Boom. Boom. You know, that's a good question. He didn't practice yesterday. We're hopeful that it's today or tomorrow that he gets out there. I know he was doing some conditioning things. I know he was doing some individual work, but we got to see if he can punch and pop and, and press and, and get off blocks. That's what we'll find out the next two days. Chris, obviously every game is different, but there's got to be a good mindset with the team right now coming off that win. Can you 
just describe what, what you see among uh, the team as far as a mindset goes going forward? Well, there's confidence uh, in, in the fact of we found a way to win a game that for a while didn't look like we were going to, we were going to find, we were going to pull it out. And uh, I think that's got to give the guys confidence that we were down 14 points twice and down in the fourth quarter. Uh, and, you know, just that fourth quarter, we made a nice drive. We, we turned the ball over. Uh, they make a drive, we get a stop, and then we drive it down the field and score to go up. And then the defense to get a big stop and then the offense to run the clock out. I thought that was uh, a confidence boost for the offensive lineman and the running back to say, we're going to uh, finish the game on the field. So um, energy is good. It's always better after a win. And it's been, it'd been a while, you know, when you throw the open weekend, it'd been a while. And uh, so we talked about uh, having that good feeling again, and, and it starts with our preparation Monday through Thursday. Maybe it's a loaded question for you, given all the success you've had, but can uh, wins become contagious? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it, it's the confidence. And you know, we talked about last week, preparation leads to confidence. And I think our guys prepared really well and confidence was there. Was it shaken a little bit early on? Yeah, but the confidence didn't waver. Confidence leads to belief. And when you have belief as a football player, if you have belief as a team, that becomes contagious. And that's what we have to continue to work on for consistency purposes. Question. Through the magic of K-State sports, we were able to see Skylar Thompson kind of giving a uh, post-game talk to, can you just speak on his leadership and what he's meant so far? Uh, he's been everything. And uh, we put a lot on Skyler's plate. And um, I grabbed him in the second half and, and said, you know what? They're, they're doing a good job of shutting down our run game. They're, they're doing a really good job. But we've got to spin it around. We're going we're gonna to get into some open sets, and we're going to throw the football, and we're going to put the game on your shoulders. And he looked at me and said, let's go. Let's, let's do it. And uh, not every game is going to be like that. Uh, some games you're going to have success running the football, and then you have to complement it with the throw game. Where on Saturday, we had to, in that second half, throw the football to be successful. And 11 guys caught passes. And I think that's something that is really uh, a critical piece for us, that uh, you're always a viable candidate in the pass game when Skyler's throwing the ball. And uh, he saw the field really well, dumped it off periodically. They, I thought they rushed the passer really well, and I thought our protection held up for the most, point, most part. And having that many guys involved, I think, is going to help us moving forward. You've had games like last week where you've thrown the ball for a lot of yards. You've had games like early in the season where you ran the ball for a lot of yeah. yards. What's the key to getting those together in the same game and having balance? Um, a little bit of what the defense gives you. That's for starters. You know, are they going to load the box a la what some teams do, or are they going to have a light box? Whatever that that's going to dictate some of it. Uh, but for us, it's probably the balance on early downs, and I think that's what helped us in the second half. Uh, this past week is we threw the ball an awful lot on first and second down, uh, which even when it got to third down, it was it was a little bit more third and manageable uh, and, and not being uh, whether it's predictable or not being by the book and saying we're going to run the ball early to set up some of the play action stuff. That was the thing that was much different about this game. A lot of the passing game in the second half uh, was not built on play action. It was lining up four and five receiver sets. And I know Deuce and, and Daniel and tight ends were a part of that, but just trying to get the ball out of our hands and see if we can make some plays after the catch. And so we need balance, but in the same respect, we still controlled the clock and controlled the tempo and kept their offense on the sideline. And I thought that was important. However you do that, whether it's a controlled rush game or a controlled passing game, if you can keep a really good offense uh, on the sideline, the clock's going to keep ticking. And I, I think Cade Warner might come in here today. Can I ask a, what he's given you guys this year and B, can you tell us a little bit about your history with his dad? Yeah. Uh, he's been great for us. He's been a tremendous leader. He's getting more and more comfortable in the offense. Uh, he has a great rapport with, with sky and uh, he's made a few impact plays. I, I'm hopeful that, the confidence between the two, he can make more impactful plays because he's got really good hands. He creates separation uh, and he makes plays with a football in his hand. Um, his, his dad and I went to school together. Um, I was a little bit older than Kurt, uh, but uh, played with Kurt for my first two years. Then I was a grad assistant the next three years uh, when Kurt was there. And when Kurt had a 
phenomenal senior season. And I think it was 93. I was in my last year as a grad assistant there. And it just had always maintained contact with Kurt throughout the years. Um, and uh, he and his wife, Brenda, are, are um, local Iowans that I've known for a long time and, and such a tremendous family. And they've done so many things across the the region, country, state where they're at in Arizona, just because they give back so much. Chris, you're pretty young at the fullback position. Just evaluate how, how those players have played so far this season. Yeah, they've done a nice job. We're, we just keep rotating guys in there, trying to find the right mix, as well as we've had some injuries, some illnesses maybe that we haven't had somebody all the time you know it's some sometimes been jack sometimes been senate sometimes been barda even christian moore has been a little bit of that as well as you know lenners and, and and wheeler some of the other guys that are playing some tight end and fullback uh it's going to be kind of by committee that's what we're going to continue to do uh as we continue to evaluate what skill set each guy has we're trying to push ben senate a little bit more because he's a a hybrid tight end and fullback where some of the other guys are true fullbacks. Um, so I think Jay Ray's doing a great job of trying to spread those reps around. In a lot of ways on Saturday, you overcame them. Uh, and I'm talking about penalties. Is that still, are you still a little too annoyed with the, the frequency and the yeah. timing, I guess, of your mistakes. Yeah, that was really frustrating on Saturday. Once again, if you have a holding penalty or something, okay, uh, that that's going to happen uh, in in a game situation. The uh, the pre snap penalties we in game seven, game eight are, are we have to stop. And I, I the crowd was good, but the crowd shouldn't have been that big of a factor. And so I know it's something that whether it's the, the, the rhythm of the cadence to us sitting in there to um, the clap, because we had to go and clap a few times and we prepped it and we worked it uh, a bunch throughout the week. Uh, we just have to clean them up. We, we are not a, a unit that needs to be in first and 15 all the time. And we've got to get better and, and clean that stuff up. You know, again, it's different from game to game, depending on where you're playing, but is there a, a I guess a standard in terms of you like, four penalties or less a game. And I like four. zero, <laughs> but the biggest thing is you want the pre-snap penalties to be done. You know, that, uh, you know, the, the false starts, the offsides, you know, for us to, and we didn't jump offsides when they threw the pick. I mean, we, we didn't, we, you can see it on film. We didn't jump offsides, but those are the ones you have to avoid. Um, because you're going to get an occasional holding or pass interference or something. So we've got to eliminate the pre-snap penalties. Uh, and that's, you know, it's part concentration and focus, and it's part just the rhythm of how we how we run our cadence. Seems like we ask you about Deuce a lot, but it you know, two thousand yards in seventeen games, faster than Tyler Lockett and Dee Sproles. Just what has he meant to you guys? It's fun to watch every week. It's uh, it's even it's fun to watch at practice because he does the same things in practice. The, the the one catch he made on their sideline where it should have been a three yard gain and he split a couple guys and then another guy had an angle on him and he kind of stiff armed that guy and then everybody thought he was out of bounds and he wasn't out of bounds. And him getting down to the eleven yard line. Those are the plays that you're, you you know, you take for granted thinking, oh, it's just Deuce being Deuce. But those are phenomenal plays that uh, he's able to make. And those are the explosive plays that you know, we need to have him make because he is that kind of a player. Yeah. You know, our, one of our players of the game was pickle. Um, I, I thought pick played a really, really good game. Uh, he was disruptive. Uh, put some pressure on on the quarterback. Uh, I, I know that we're always getting good play out of out of Timmy and, and Eli. Um, Tyrone Tolini had a big sack for us. Uh, Cartez is playing a little bit in there. It's going to be until we get boom back and and more of a full speed boom. I don't know if that's going to be this week or next week, but we're going to have to continue to move guys around. Uh, but we're getting you know, and it was a hot day down there, so we needed mileage out of a, a lot of different bodies. And the other thing that helped us was 
Uh, Felix wasn't having to play 55 plays. We cut his reps down a little bit, and you saw the impact of that in the fourth quarter. There was a fresh Felix in the fourth quarter, uh, a fresh Nate in the fourth quarter, as opposed to guys that had played 50-some snaps. They were in the in the 30 area, uh, and that allowed us in the fourth quarter, I think, to really do a good job rushing the passer. And we rushed four this week a lot more than we have in the past. We, we brought Daniel Green in there and let him rush the passer because we thought we had an advantage against their offensive line and we wanted the four man rush to create some one on ones and it did. I know it's frustrating for him because he's a prideful guy and he's working his tail off to get his body back. Um, to where it was last year because he was really impactful and really explosive and really quick uh, throughout all last year. And he, and you could tell he had confidence in himself and confidence in, in, in his body. Um, and then he had the, the unfortunate injury in the, in December of all things late in last season. And then we get to December and you don't have a surgery until around Christmas. It just, those injuries, typically take a year and sometimes you can get back in nine months and 10 months. And I know he's pushing the envelope and it was fun to see him make a catch fun to see him get back out there. I'm hoping that gives him some confidence as well uh, because he's a really good football player. It's just unfortunate uh, that he had to miss so much time and he's just trying to play catch up. Yeah, and that was uh, typically, yes, uh, that was just a little bit different game plan once we got to the second half with us throwing the football so much, uh, you know, then we end up putting Deuce at a little bit more at wide receiver uh, in some of our empty stuff. But in, in a normal situation, absolutely. And, and Joe's an explosive running back and is going to continue to make some plays for us. I think that's getting back to one of the questions earlier is what kind of game is it? What are they doing? Is it a light box? Is it somewhere where they're pushing everybody in the box and how many times are we able to run the football but uh, I've been really pleased with Joe uh, throughout this whole season and he's made, had a huge impact on our success Chris there's a really impressive stat in here about uh, just Skyler's accuracy over the past three games one would you say this is maybe the best he's been over like three game stretches he's been here and two is this kind of how he looked when you mentioned just preseason camp just how how good he looked yeah it, it really is and he's now has a lot of confidence in his body and um you can see that over the last three weeks how that confidence has grown with you know his knee feeling so much better his arm feels good he's getting the timing with all these receivers monday through friday as opposed to you know, missing the, the few weeks he did. It was very similar to what he was doing in fall camp, spinning it around and uh, having a lot of confidence. And just the game is really uh, – the thing that's fun for me is to talk to him on the sideline or after the game of how the game has slowed down for him and he sees things so well. And he's such an accurate thrower. And even out of tough platforms or out of uh, under duress, he finds a way to either step up or slide out uh, and put the ball in a position where kids can make plays. And so uh, excited about where he's at. Ex I know he's excited about how he's playing. And there's going to be games like we had last Saturday where we have to put it in his hands. And uh, I don't know how that's going to play out every week, but uh, uh, we had we had a kind of a, a another part of the game plan that we really went to last Saturday that uh, I think he's one of the best players in the big 12 and you have to let him be that guy and let him play. All right. Have a good week.